everybody. <laughs> um, I'm Lauren, and uh, the long title of my project is uh, Dynamic Trophic Linkages Between Forage Fish and Zooplankton in Northern Chilean Patagonia. Um, and so first, just like, a, little bit, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a marine ecologist, um, which means that I'm broadly interested in how the marine environment shapes animal communities. Um, and I'm currently a PhD student at the Netherlands Institute for Ocean Research. And so I just finished my first year, and that's a bit how the timing worked out um, with, uh, with the Fulbright. Um, and uh, this you know, career has allowed me to work on a lot of different topics, um, including uh, intertidal energy at uh, the University of Washington in Seattle. I've also worked on uh, coral reef ecology, Arctic sciences, um, and uh, salmon populations, uh, and also six. Nope. Ice. Okay. So yeah, six years ago, um, I was also able to come to uh, Chilean Patagonia to work at a marine research station in Winai, um, and this was a really awesome experience. I worked on a, a plankton uh, zoo biogeo uh, biogeography project. Um, and, oh, yay, okay, good. Uh, and so this was basically um, a, a dream spot as a marine ecologist. I mean, it was beautiful, and the fjord landscape was just really awesome, and it was just really uh, interesting um, marine life here. And of course, uh, what was really great was also meeting a lot of really awesome people, so I'm super excited to have this opportunity to be back here. Uh, for more research. Okay, so a bit about what I will be doing. Um, I'll be studying uh, the food web um, of Chilean Patagonia, and so just a little bit about marine food webs in general. Um, so you've got, at the bottom, uh, phytoplankton, which are tiny uh, marine plants, and these are eaten by zooplankton, which are really small uh, drifting animals, and so they're um, on the range of micrometers to millimeters, and they just drift in the currents. And then after that, you've got forage fish, which are small schooling fish, so these eat the zooplankton, and these are in turn eaten by um, large fish, marine mammals, and birds. And so my research will be focusing on forage fish, and these are super important because not only do they transfer energy from lower trophic levels, so you've got uh, from the zoo <coughs> to higher trophic levels, the really charismatic uh, marine mammals and birds. But they're also really economically important um, in the area because there's really big fisheries um, for forage fish. So my research will be centered around uh, northern Patagonia, specifically the Sea of Chiloé. Um, where there are three forage fish species that live in this area. You've got the sardine, the entrevetta, and sprat. And so they, they all live um, in this area. Um, nope. Did you do that? <laughs> Thanks. Um, and so this area uh, not only has a really um, big population of forage fish, but it also has really complex oceanography because you've got all of these water masses coming together in this one spot from the Pacific, but also uh, runoff from glaciers and rivers. Um, and it is really highly productive, especially in the spring and summer, where you've got all these plankton blooms, um, which means that there is really big differences in uh, zooplankton community and abundance. Um, and so my research question is, so how do these three forage fish species share these prey resources in this really um, oceano oceanographically dynamic as well um, as uh, planktonly dynamic <laughs> <laughs> area? Okay, so then my main I'll have two, two things that I'll be doing. So first, I will be uh, comparing the trophic level, which is basically the position um, of an organism in the food chain of these three fish, as well as their diets. 
And then I'll also be looking at the seasonal variability um, in zooplankton community and abundance in the area. Okay. Um, and so I'll be doing my research at the Universidad de Concepcion under the supervision of Professor Leonardo Castro. Um, and so I'll be using samples that were collected in 2018 um, of fish and zooplankton. So I'll be dissecting fish and looking directly at what, they're, what they've eaten. Um, and then I'll also be looking at the zooplankton community and quantifying you know, what kind of species are there, how many are there, and comparing their, their stomach contents with, um, with that community. Um, I'll also be doing stable isotope analysis. Um, and so ratios of nitrogen, stable isotopes in nitrogen and, and carbon um, tells you basically yeah, what, what the trophic level of the, of the organism is. And so this will allow us to look at what the fish are eating over a longer time scale, so that will complement the diet study. And then also I will be going uh, to this area and collecting more fish and zooplankton. Um, and, and so then this will allow us to supplement the, the samples that are already there and give a, a bigger temporal uh, dimension to this study. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, and so I will, um, in, in, in addition to disseminating uh, my results to local fishermen communities. I'll also be, um, be having undergraduate assistants and so helping them get a little bit of a hands-on research. Um, and also I would like to work with a, um, with a high school teacher to develop a lesson plan based on my research. So I think that that would be just like a really great opportunity to um, disseminate, you know, get, get high school students um, interested in, in science using um, research that's coming out of their area. Um, and so then this, this research will be really interesting to the, to the fisheries managers because uh, knowing what um, their fish are eating will help them better manage, you know, how many fish they can catch, when, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then also it will help us better understand the region's resilience to climate change because um, knowing how the uh, all, all, all of these, you know, fish and zooplankton um, change with uh, with the environmental variables um, will help us better predict how this um, region's resources might change in the future. And then also, um, this research will help contribute to the ongoing debate um, of whether marine food webs are uh, bottom up um, driven or top down, down driven, so whether they're prey limited or um, predator uh, driven. Um, and of course, that's, you know, it's a gray area, but um, it'll, be, it'll be a really cool contribution for sure. And then yeah, so thanks for listening and uh, if you guys have any questions. But mm -hmm. are those three species you're focusing on? Are they kind of the only species, or are those kind of like key species? That um, yeah, they're the right. only species. So what's pretty interesting about forage fish is that they're a really um, important um, component of the food web. But there's not that many species, so you've just got a couple species performing this really important role. Um, and so actually, yeah, there, there's these three species um, in the area. I have a question about how. Um, the marine ecosystem in the, the Gulf of Ancud or the, the mm -hmm. Chile Sea mm -hmm. um, comes to bear, or rather how the, the salmoneras, mm -hmm. the salmon industry there comes to bear on the local ecosystem, right? So mm -hmm. um, you talked about local fisheries managers. Yeah. Are these, my understanding, which is extremely limited, is that there are um, artisanal fisheries operating um, ge in geographical proximity and in tandem mm -hmm. with larger salmoneras, and and how do you see, you know, the mass production of salmon and impacting the kind of thing that you are studying? Yeah, I, that's a great question. Um, I, I so from when I was here last last time, that was six years ago though. It was definitely a pretty contentious uh, topic, and people um, were pretty worried about it, especially. Um, 
just the outflux of uh, um, nutrients that comes mm -hmm. from uh, that comes from the salmonellas, um, and so I, I'm sure that that will be uh, an an interesting an interesting topic, and it'll be really interesting to see how um, how the local fishermen, because because I will be um, mostly working with the artisanal uh, okay. fishermen, so not the it's not the salmon people, but I'm really I'm really intrigued. Uh, to learn what their a bit more about what their attitudes are and what uh, what the yeah politics are there for sure. What small towns will you be in when you do some of the local work? Like where mm -hmm. will you port out in? Um, Calbuco, uh, and then so the they do the collections usually just from Puerto Montt. Um, but I'm I, yeah. I mean we're gonna take out some small boats and sure. just, just go and uh, you know, do our do our nettos. Um, So with the stable isotope work, mm -hmm. so is that like you'll be doing those analyses on the contents of the stomach of the three species, or and expecting a thumbprint from like what they're eating? Yeah. So the stable isotope work will be um, done on different tissues of the fish um, because there's actually different uh, amounts of um, stable isotopes that are stored. So like you know you've got muscle tissue or liver tissue, and you've got different. Um, yeah, amounts of stable isotopes, and then from there, um, you can see you can kind of see what they're uh, what they've eaten for um, a time scale of days to months, and so it's kind of yeah, it's it's more intended as a complement to the to the diet study because with the diet study you can see exactly what they ate, but only you know that day, um, and so then with the with the stable isotopes you get more of a of a long term. Are they eating the same thing? But we don't actually know what they're eating. Okay. Whether so it's more related to the same. Got it. Yeah. Any other? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have your mind. What do you call it in the middle of the hourglass? What do you call these major species? The forage fish. Forage fish, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are there yeah. any that uh, specifically look at like a, that, that dying on like algae blooms and stuff and like mm -hmm. excessive? Uh, so yeah. <laughs> they 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 exclusively uh, eat zooplankton. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, you've got um, animals in the um, higher uh, trophic levels that eat zooplankton, um, and then you've also got uh, outside of the hourglass, you have detritivores that will eat that are kind of more like uh, scavengers. And so yeah, I mean you have also lots what of other things. What do you call those? Detritivores. Oh, detritivores. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so there's so there's lots of there's lots of other stuff, but yeah, I definitely like the, the hourglass. <laughs> Is it just because did you did you choose that because it's a bottleneck species or something? Yeah, so it's yeah, so, so um, there's relatively few species of forage fish compared to uh, the other trip levels. So we've got a really large variety of zooplankton, a couple forage fish species, and then a large variety of, uh, of birds, fish, and marine animals that eat them. So they're they're kind of like at the center. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.